Okay, and we're back for problems from section 4.5. In 4.5, uh, we're solving exponential and logarithmic expressions. So we're going to have some sort of equality. And the first one is an equality with logarithms. So we'll go ahead and start there. Uh, the first one, question 13 says, solve for x. Okay, so we're just trying to find x. And the expression, the equality rather, is log of x. So that's base 10 log plus log, again, base 10, so there's nothing written, of x plus 3 equals 1. Okay, there's a couple ways you could go about this. Uh, combining logarithms, uh, rewriting an exponential form. Um, Right. Uh, right. So we'll just we'll go ahead and, and we'll combine first on the left side. That's a good way to do it. So we know uh, if you have a sum of logarithms which have the same base, you can write that as one logarithm, which has as its argument the product of the other two arguments. Okay. So log of x plus log of x plus 3 is <laughs> log of x times x plus 3. Same base product of the two arguments above. That's still equal to 1. The next thing we'll do is we're going to use sort of the, the, the inverse here. Okay. We know that this is log base 10. So we're going to write this in the exponential form now, which uses the inverse the operations of exponentiation of logarithm. right? So what we can say here is that this statement is equivalent to, it's the same as, 10 to the first equals x times x plus 3, which, because I think we need to, I'm just going to distribute out. That's x squared plus 3x. So this we can solve. And if we can solve this, then we've solved this. So let's go for it. Uh, let's bring everything to the right side. By subtracting the 10 over. Well, I think I can factor this. If I couldn't, I would go right to the quadratic formula. Uh, but I think I can factor this. So this would be x plus 5 times x minus 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And 5 minus 2 is positive 3. So that gives us a correct factorization here, which tells us by the zero product property that either x is negative 5 or x is 2. So are these valid solutions? Well, from the beginning, this one here says that x must be positive. And this one here says that x must be bigger than negative 3. Why? Because of the domains of these logarithms. So from the very beginning, we know that x has to be non-negative, and it can't be 0. So here at the end, we can eliminate right away this solution. It's what we call an extraneous solution. It's an extra solution that is erroneous. It's wrong, so it's extraneous. This one is in the domain. All right, it's, it's bigger than zero, so it's in our domain. So that's it, that's the solution. It's the only one that we got here. Question 14, very similar. But instead of starting with logarithms, we're starting with exponentials. And we're, we're asked to solve for x. So here's the equation we start with. 5 to the x equals 4 to the x plus 1. Uh, there are easier versions of problems like this where the bases are the same. And when that's the case, you just equate uh, the, the powers. right? But here, this problem's a little more difficult. We don't have the same base, do we? So what you're going to do is you're going to try and 
uh, you're going to try and use logarithms to break this down a little bit. So here we go. Let's take logarithms of both sides. Let's take, in fact, the log base 5 of both sides. So if I take log base 5 of the left side, what do I get? I get just x. And if I take the log base 5 of the right side, what do I get? So this is it, but I'm going to write what it's equal to on the left here. By the laws of logarithms, I can bring this x plus 1 down. This is x plus 1 times the log base 5 of 4. Now that's just a number, right? So this is, this is nice, because this now is the equation we want to deal with. Taking logarithms of both sides, this is the same same sort of thing that you do like when you're dividing both sides by the same number, when you're uh, multiplying both sides by something, adding something to both sides, subtracting something from both sides. You can take the logarithm of both sides of an equation and still maintain the equality. Yeah, it's one of the properties of logarithms. It's a, They're monotonic functions. That means they're always increasing. Okay, they're one-to-one -one functions as well. That means for every input, there's only one output. And for every output, there's only one input. So that means this equality is maintained even if you take logs of both sides. Okay? And there's nothing to worry about, like with square roots, where there's possibly plus or minuses. That's because square roots are not, or x squared is not a one-to-one -one function, right? Right, it's two to one. So logarithms are one to one. So they're they're very very much nicer than than x squared. So now we're we're going to try and solve this for x. Okay. So how can we do that? Well, <laughs> let's divide. Uh, no, you know what? Uh, let's not divide. Let's subtract everything to one side. So we get x minus x times log base 5 of 4 um, minus log base 5 of 4. I skipped a step there. Probably shouldn't have. Uh, this is just subtraction of x plus 1 times log base 5 of 4. Then I distributed the log. So x times log base 5 of 4 and 1 times log base 5 of 4. And then I'm subtracting that. So I've got subtraction across the sum. So I distributed the negative. Okay, now this is all equal to 0. Now what I'll do is I'll just factor out the x here. So this gives us 1 minus log base 5 of 4. Okay, so I factored out an x from this pair. And I've got a minus log base 5 of 4. So let's say I add that over to the other side. Okay. And then from here, all I have to do is divide. So I'm going to divide by this, this here. So x equals log base 5 of 4 divided by 1 minus log base 5 of 4. That's it. Box it, turn it in. Final answer. So it, it, it looks a little more complicated because there's logarithms in there, there's more words, more symbols, but it, it's really it's really pretty simple solving, right? Take the log of both sides, isolate the x, and divide by whatever the coefficient is on the x. The coefficient just looks a little, a little uh, a little messier. That's all. So that's it for section 4.5, uh, solving exponential and logarithm equations. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes for uh, problems from section 5.1. So I hope that helped. I'll see you next time.